So we're gonna do an overview of quadratics. So we'll start by talking about, um, there's probably three major forms they've shown you guys. And a common one, or probably the most common one is known as um, the standard form. Yeah. Yes, awesome, you're familiar with that one? Yeah. Okay, so the standard form is usually written as y is equal to, and the variables they use for the coefficients are usually an a in front of the x squared, and there's three terms to it, plus b is the coefficient, for the second term, and then c is the variable for the constant. So ax squared plus bx plus c, that's common for you? Yeah, so they call this the general form for the standard. Um, and then there are two other major ones. There is the vertex form, okay? And that one's usually represented algebraically as a y equals a, and then you have a bracket, x, minus you guys use the letter h maybe yeah we use h and k h and k perfect okay um it doesn't technically matter what letter you use it's just um you can use any variable to represent those numbers it's just i want to be consistent with what you guys are using okay in fact we could use happy faces it could be like happy face sad face doesn't matter any symbol represents what we're missing um so standard vertex and then we have the factored form and let's keep that color consistent So I'm gonna make kind of like a triangle out of it. And this one reads y is equal to a again. Mm -hmm. And then you have x minus, do you guys use maybe like an r and an s? Do you use any letters for this form at all? It would say something like subtract. I think it's x, I think it's x and r that you use for Okay, probably r, and they wouldn't use x again just because it already represents this one. I'm gonna guess an r and it's commonly an s, but again, any variable we can use. Um, and I think, essentially, you know, so my notes, I think it's, she does like R and R, like R1 R1 and, and R2, R2. no and problem. We just put like the thing, like we put like one and two, like yep. right underneath it. Kind of root thing. one and root two. They probably call it that because technically these represent, um, the X intercepts, which are commonly called roots. Okay. So we got kind of like a triangle forming here. Okay. Well, I didn't draw a very good version of it. Um, the idea is that when you're working with quadratics or parabolas, you are essentially just moving between these three forms because each of these forms give you some information much quicker than the other ones do, okay? Um, for instance, if we're graphing, so this is algebra, right? And whenever we have a problem in mathematics, it's great if we can represent things with both the algebra and then the graph itself. And the common graph or the of the parent function looks like this, the parent function would be this. Oh, sorry, guys, don't call it functions yet. Uh, the parent equation, y equals x squared. And this is the one where there's like nothing attached to it. This is the bare bones version of it. And the graph usually looks like this. See, I do a good job. Oh, not bad. That's pretty good for me. Okay. Um, each of these forms help us when we go to graph something. So the very first form, standard form, graphically is not wonderful. Doesn't give us a lot of information. The A, I can't look at that number and plot a point on a graph. Either can I from the B, unless you're very, very good at your mental math. Um, C is actually pretty helpful. It does do one thing. It does do y-intercept. So if I'm in standard form and I want to plot a point on the graph, if I take a look at what the C is in standard form, that's where the y-intercept is. Okay, so I'll give you a different example since this one is a very unique version. Let's say that we have some other one over here. I'm sure we'll do it in green. Let's say it looks like this. This will help us with what we're talking about. I'm not the smoothest at drawing those. But this would be your C point on standard form, okay? And then from there, if I only have a C point, I can't actually graph everything. I need a couple other points to figure this out. So we go through some algebraic algorithm and we convert it to vertex form. And we're gonna talk about what that is. Um, vertex form, any ideas what that might give you when we're trying to graph it? Form gives you the x and y, and yeah. it gives you the stretch factor. Absolutely, it does. Great. So there's my vertex for the parabola. Uh, where's my? There it is. Okay. And the vertex will have two coordinates. It'll have an x and a y coordinate. And it turns out the h value and the k value represent those two. 
So they allow us to plot the vertex of this, which is pretty good. We're getting pretty close to being able to graph something if we have the vertex and one of the other coordinates. You're right, the A will give you a stretch factor or if this thing's been flipped. If it is a negative value, it'd be flipped the other way. Um, and then from there, two other pretty important parts of a quadratic would be the roots. And whether we're in the standard form or the vertex form, we'll have some algorithm or some formula that takes us to the factor form. And the factor form will give us the roots, which are the x-intercepts, which you guys have named R1 and R2. Um, so essentially what we're doing is no matter how we've been presented the quadratic, we're going to move between these forms to help us get all the key points in case we need to graph it. And then when we apply it to like problem solving, each of these points give us different information, whether I'm looking for like break even points or a minimum value or where something starts. We just have to piece together that really what they're asking is what are the roots? What's the vertex? What's the y intercept? OK, um, when we move between them, if I'm going from standard to vertex form, I'm doing something called completing the square. Do you know that as an algorithm? OK. There's also two formulas, which aren't commonly shown. Have they ever shown you a formula for going from standard to vertex? Maybe, maybe not. Do you like, I don't know which ones are basics. Is it the one that's like, there's one that's like really long, right? Ah, uh, that one is probably is the quadratic one? formula. Oh, it's probably that one. Yes. For a perfect square, not completely. Ah, OK, square. yes. Yeah. So there's a completing the square. And then what I'll do is I'll show you another one where there's you can do completing the square. Or I can give you like, two equations that where you can take the values from here, plug them into these formulas, and they're going to spit out the H and the K or the X and the Y value. Okay, so I'll, I can show you those after. Otherwise, that's like a whole lesson in itself. But what's important is kind of like, do you remember going from uh, solid to liquid to gas in science? Yeah, that's what we're kind of talking about. How do we do this? Oh, you know, you're doing evaporation or sublimation. And instead, we're talking about our algorithms. So to go from standard to vertex, I complete the square. If I want to go back from vertex to standard, I would expand, expand, and simplify. I ran out of room there, OK? So that's the idea. If I'm going back the other way, I expand and simplify. So I would expand this set of brackets here. And then I would use my distribution. Sometimes they call it FOIL or rainbow method. Then I distribute the A, I add the K, and simplify everything. And I'd be back in this form here. So depending which way we're going, we use one or other algorithm, OK? If I'm in standard form and I want to get to factor form, any ideas what the algorithm is and what we do to take something from a standard form to a factored form? And the name of the form hopefully is kind of... factoring? Yeah, that's it. It's factoring. We're going to go through factoring to do that. So we factor to move from standard to factored form. Um, there is another one you can use, and I would assume they've shown it to you. It's called the quadratic formula. Um, a lot of times we see that as just a way of finding the roots to something, but you can actually use the quadratic formula to move from standard to factored form. And I can show you that piece also, okay? Um, and then same idea, what if I'm in factored form? If I'm in factored form and I want to go back to standard form, I actually use this exact same algorithm. This one's already um, put into two binomials, they call it. We are going to expand. I'm just going to call it E and S. Is that OK? Yeah. Just because we've called it over there, E and S. This is expand and simplify. So depending on whether I'm in standard and want to go here because I'm looking for roots or because I want to put it back into the standard form because they've asked us to do that, I would expand and simplify. Um, now, technically, this is enough. I don't have to know a shortcut here. I can traverse from factored to standard to vertex, and then back to vertex to standard to factored. I mean, there's that extra step in between, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but there are tricks to go back and forth from these. Um, do they have formal names? Let me quickly say. They don't really have formal names. One of them is um, to go from factored to vertex, you find the axis of symmetry. Have you guys ever talked about that? That piece? Uh, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Maybe I won't chat too long about it. I'll just tell you. There's a, there's a method called finding the axis of symmetry and then some substitution, and we can find our, um, our vertex. And then when we go from vertex form back to factored, we would, um, uh, what do we do? We set, set equal to zero, and then we solve for 
are R1 and R2. And maybe you guys haven't done those two. It's sometimes common for in the grade 10 class, they don't actually talk about these two pieces here. But this is an overview of all quadratics. This is everything you've done. It's really just moving between these forms because each of these forms give you a little bit of different information about the graph, okay? Um, how does that feel as 